Welcome back to the channel, I'm Tom Quigley, bringing the latest tips, tricks and techniques for your contemporary painting and drawing needs. And welcome back to another video. On today's video, I'm going to give you my top six techniques so you can fill those sketchbooks. Hopefully we're going to make them look really exciting and also serve as a purpose for larger scale pieces of work. Anyway, I've talked way too much, so without further ado, grab a coffee, sit back and enjoy the video. See you later. Okay, so we're already on to the first one, and this one is a multiple drawing. Basically, it's surrounding one idea. So before you hone in on one particular thing, maybe explore things that are related to that certain subject. As you can see here, I'm looking at bins and mundane objects, as that's what I'm interested in. Try to make them elevate them, make them look a little bit more interesting. And as you see, I've done a number of things on here. I've not done them too big. I've tried to separate them around the page and almost just give it more of a flow around the page. Some of them actually go on to the other side and it just creates more of a rhythm through that, that sketchbook. And also leaving some white space, that you can write some notes or annotation next to them. Now, as I go through here, just looking at the cones and also some roadworks, I'm just gonna start thinking about the second page that I was talking about. Now in this double page, what we're thinking about, it's all about drawing one thing, but multiple times. So you'll see some of my drawings are really loose and hardly anything there, just looking at the basic shapes, Others looking at quality of line. Here I did one minute and three minute drawings, so time drawings, and then slowly getting more refined as I go along. Um, and that's really important when looking at it. This time I looked at Oxford Road Station. It also reminded me of Ellis Lowry's work, looking at the stairs. So that was why my point of interest. Now moving on to the third one, you want to be looking at using a variety of different tools and materials. Now, it doesn't have to be extravagant. I've just looked at using a biro pen, just three different colours. And here I've looked at uh, the Dunlop factory in Manchester, but also looking at Castlefield, which is the you know heart of the industrial town, really, to be honest. And I really love these uh, columns and bridges and how they overlap one another and I actually try to do that in the work also as you can see here I've done quite a nice refined drawing using the blue biro and then it gets more loose now this is the next page here what you've got to consider is that you will have to demonstrate some of your drawing ability but not all of it has to be refined as you can see some areas are really loose but some areas are really tight within the drawing an area of focus so try and make sure that when you do the drawing let the viewer make up their own mind about the, the loose areas, and that's gonna be more of interest. Now this one, when we're moving on to, it's drawing on multiple surfaces. So I've drawn a coffee place here. You might want to use the wrapper from that particular establishment and draw it over the top of it, um, which also records your, you know, your journey of that, the day that you took that day, which is quite nice. Here, it's all about drawing things from multiple angles. So this time I've chosen to use a telephone box as my subject, looking at the graffiti and I've taken multiple images and done some multiple drawings to see which uh, view is my favorite. Because if you don't do that, how are you gonna know what the best composition is when it comes to your final painting? So you'll find me always trying to work out what is the best composition for the drawing? And by doing these little sketches, I can find out what I'm interested in. So I'm just gonna finish this one until I start the next one. So we're moving on to the next one and this one is all about being selective so there's many things when you take a picture um, within your image or maybe just drawn from life it's all about being selective and what you want to draw and so you've got to really hone in on certain things and what it means that when I'm doing the drawing here I'm not putting anything else at all bar the thing that I want in my drawing um, and that what that's going to help me do is Come to a conclusion if that's something you are interested in. As you can see here, I've chosen the newspaper stand. It's a large picture and then I've zoomed in, took that bit that I wanted from that picture and then recreated it. So it's really important that you do that because that's going to help you decide what you like and what you don't like. And also it's really quite a nice clean image, just having that precise uh, drawing in the middle there and nothing else to distract it. 
Now here I'm just having a go at drawing a uh, concrete wall which had some graffiti on which I thought was quite nice. Also the sun was kind of beaming down on it um, and I thought that was quite interesting so I thought I decided I'll take a couple of pictures and then see if it would look quite cool in a painting. And there you go, that's the picture that I took. Sometimes I take them in black and white, just adds a little bit more dramatic, and it also helps me with the hues and the tones if I'm drawing from them. As you can see, I'm using Fineliner, which is um, a black pen, and that's also going to help me with it. Now, just talking about the black pens that I'm using, I'm just using this one, which is a 0 0.01, and I've also got another one, which is a thicker um, tip, and that's going to help me get those dark areas in quickly rather than taking the time shading things in. And that's what you want to try and get away from in the drawing, especially if you want to record it quickly. So I'm just going to let you watch me complete this drawing. Hopefully you find it quite interesting and also how you start a drawing. Sometimes I'll put pencil in the background, sometimes I'll just draw it straight off. <laughs> So I thought I'd have a look through the sketchbook and you can see there's quite a lot of variety in there. I've actually got one sketch left to show you. So I'll show that in a second. But you can see using a variety of different sizes of drawings, it just makes it look interesting to look through, especially with some annotation added, it'll look quite full. Um, and the last one, this one is just a really simple one. All it is, is a continuous line drawing. I've done it before, um, but a definite staple to have in a sketchbook. And don't feel like you just have to can do a quick one. Try doing half an hour, maybe even an hour one. Force yourself to analyze every single bit of detail within that drawing, and you'll, you'll be amazed with the results and what you can achieve. Here, I'm just doing a news agent, uh, which is quite a run down um, place, and I thought it was quite interesting. But that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Well, that's it, guys, for the tutorial and showing you how to record your ideas in your sketchbooks. Hopefully it was interesting, hopefully it was exciting, and it's made you enthusiastic about working in your sketchbooks and also maybe progressing onto larger scale pieces of work. One thing I must tell you, though, those six techniques that I've told you, there are so much more, and I'm tempted to do a part two. So please look out for that one. But I'll leave it there, guys. If you like this video, please give us a like, and if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. But until next time, see you later. Bye.